way to approach the off delay timers is by looking at them as 100% opposite to timer on delay steel ends. And this table summarizes this fact using number of points. Now remember the timer block, the timers block instruction will exist to the right side of our rungs and it's going to be considered as an output for the rung that it belongs to. And it depends if we have a logic continuity across the rung or if there isn't logic continuity across the rung, this will affect the state of the timer and what is it doing right now. So for the first point, for the regular timer on delay 2N, in order for us to trigger this timer to start timing, we need to have a logic continuity across the rung and this will trigger the enable bit. The enable bit has to go from 0 to 1 or from false to true and this will trigger the 2N and it will start timing. On the other side for the TF, it's 100% opposite. It means we need to have a logic discontinuity across the rung. This will disable the enable bit and once the enable bit goes from 1 to 0, this actually will trigger the TF and it will start timing at that point. For the second point, the accumulator in case of undelayed timer, once you put your PLC into run mode, this will start with a value of 0. On the other side for the TF, the once you put your PLC into run mode, the accumulator will start with the initial value equal to the preset value. The third point, the dump bit, in the case of on delay timer, will go to 1, will be set to 1, only once the accumulator hits the preset value. Opposite to this fact, for the TOF, the dump bit will be set to 1, as long as the accumulator is less, strictly less than the preset value. The final point, enable bit has to go from 1 to 0 to reset the timer, or in other words, we need to have a logic discontinuity across the rung that includes the timer and the TON to reset it. For the TOF, once we have logic continuity across the rung, the enable bit will go from 0 to 1 and this will cause the timer to reset. Right now I'm going to demonstrate all of these points uh, through a simple example using RS Logics 5000. Let's go there. To demonstrate how the TOF works, I'm going to rely on the same example we used in demonstrating the TON. So I will double click on TON and from the down uh, menu I'm going to choose TOF, hit enter. By doing this we need to re-input the preset value. For this example I'm going to go with 40 seconds, so 40,000 milliseconds in Alan Bradley. One more time, these numbers are only for demonstration purposes. Okay, and let's download this and see how the TOF actually works. So remember, the TOF is simply opposite to TON. No errors, that's a good sign. Let's do the watch list. If you look at the first trunk right now, there's only one input, which is an XIC referring to a bull input start. That's the only one controlling the TOF. As you can see, the first point, once you put the PLC into run mode, automatically the rung is still broken. No, there is no logic continuity across the rung. The accumulator starts with equal being equal to the preset value. So that's opposite to TON. Let's see what will happen once we trigger push on the start button. You see right now to the left, it's closed. It's reading one in the PLC memory. The XIC is true. Logic continuity across the rung. And what happens? Right now the TF actually resets. So point number two, and to reset the TOF, you need to enable the rung. Sec the second point right now, as you can see, enable bit is uh, on, pretty much because all of the enable follows the input. So this point is uh, very similar to the uh, TON. However, if you look at the done bit, the done bit is set is equal to 1 because the accumulator is less than the preset value. And in that thing, it's also opposite to TON. So the done bit equals uh, is true, the light 3 is on right now. Watch what will happen right now once I'll release the start. So I release it, it's reading 0 to the PLC memory. The rung is broken and rung number 0. And the way this is affecting the timer, now the timer is triggered. Once there's no logic continuity or the rung is broken in the rung that has the TOF, that's when it starts timing from 0, aiming the preset value. Right now the timer timing is on because it's timing, and the dump bit is on because it's still less than the preset value. Okay, so right now, both of these timers are on, uh, both of these parameters, timer timing and dump bit, are uh, one. And again, that's one point which is opposite to the TON. By no chance, the TT and the dump bit can never be on at the same time. Only with the accumulator hits the preset value, that's when both of these parameters goes to zero, and both lights goes to zero. So one more time, if I push the start, it's enabled, uh, the timer is reset, 
anytime you release it, you break the rung, that's the condition that is required to start and trigger the TF to start timing from accumulated equals zero to the preset value. We are going to see an examples to illustrate both three timers, TON, RTO, and TOF. Remember, we can use any timer for any kind of application. However, as you're going to see in these examples, it's much easier depending on the requirement that you are solving to go with one of these timers to fulfill the requirement. Let's see the examples right now. Thank you.